Hello and welcome to Dollar Workout Club. We're so happy to have you guys here with us today. I'm your host, Drew. This is your host, Lynn, and your other host, Natalie. Uh, we're grateful that you're here today for an awesome leg workout. It's going to be a killer one, fun one. You'll hate us during the workout, but you'll love us afterwards, mm -hmm. right? Your best will. <laughs> exactly. So what we're going to do today is first of all explain the green, yellow, red color system for those of you who are new. Green, it means uh, beginner or intermediate level. So if you're a beginner, you're going to follow me. Yellow is for, uh, sorry, intermediate. <laughs> so, uh, green is beginner, yellow is intermediate, red is advanced. Yes. So pick your fitness level and you're going to follow the person according to that color system, which is one of the things we have here at Dollar Workout Club. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to show you the modifications to each exercise in today's workout. There's six different movements. I'm going to have Lynn demonstrate the green and yellow modifications and now he's going to demonstrate the red. The first movement we're doing is a squat, okay? So for green, you're going to need a chair or a ledge of something to sit down on. Your feet are going to be shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointed out, and you stay back on those heels as you come down, bring those arms out for balance, sit all the way down, and then come all the way up and squeeze your glutes all the way back down. And as you come up, you want to push off those heels, not off those toes. For yellow, you're going to be doing the same, same range of motion but with no uh, chair this time for support. So same thing, stay back on those heels and push, uh, push off those heels as you come back up and uh, notice that, that she's going below parallel. If you can go below parallel, great. Squeeze those glutes at the top. And then for red, for the movement of squats, you're gonna have a added weight to this. So same thing, feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointed out, go back on those heels as you come down. Now she's holding the weights up here or you can hold them down by your side, it's totally up to you and come up and squeeze those glutes. See how she's going down below parallel? That's what you wanna do for red and she's going at a faster pace than, than yellow and the weights add extra resistance yeah. to the The main movement. thing you wanna focus, I don't wanna see you guys bending your back like that and going really far over. Yeah. You really wanna try and keep your back straight up as possible. Yeah. Okay, the next movement we're doing today, you guys, is lunges. Uh, Lynn's gonna demonstrate the green version. You're gonna need a chair or a tall ledge, something to hold on to for balance and support. So Lynn's going to take a step back and as she goes down, notice how her chest doesn't come forward. She's standing straight up perpendicular to the ground and then she's going to alternate feet and bend that back knee as low as you can go, as you feel comfortable with, okay? You don't have to go all the way to the ground. If, if that hurts, just go down as low as you can. For yellow, you're doing the exact same movement but with no chair for support or balance. And she's going to go down as low as she can, possibly touching that knee to the ground and a good moderate pace. For Natalie, for red, she's gonna show us the same movement but she's adding weight for resistance. She's stepping back, touching that knee to the ground and alternating and notice her chest is straight up. She's not coming forward um, as she does this motion. Okay, after that, the next movement is bridges. So for green, you're gonna be on your back, hands by your side, knees bent, and you're gonna push off those heels and what you're gonna do is bring that, those hips, the pelvis up and you're squeezing those glutes as hard as you can at the very top and then going back down. Touch your lower back, up and squeeze. Uh, go back down, up and squeeze. So you wanna repeat that. Uh, yellow is doing the same thing but with, what is that you're holding? A squash. Holding a massive <laughs> squash. <laughs> Any kind of weight on anyway. your, on your uh, pelvic bone for added resistance is a step up from what Green was doing. Yeah. So she's using anything around your house you can find. She's using a squash. You could use a small child. You could use, um, <laughs> you know, a bag of food, whatever it is. And then Red, she's adding one more degree of difficulty where she is doing this on one leg, okay? So her hands are by her side. One knee is bent, one knee is off the ground, and she's coming up, still squeezing those glutes, pushing off that heel and going back down just like that. And she'll be alternating legs throughout the workout, but we'll explain that uh, during the structure of today's workout. Okay, the next one, the next movement is leg lifts. So stick with me here, there's six <laughs> different movements. So Lynn's gonna demonstrate the green. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lean against a chair or a ledge of some type, and one knee is, is perpendicular to the ground, the other one is straight out. And all you're gonna do is, with this outer leg, you're gonna lift up as high as you can go. And if that's only a few inches off the ground, that's okay. You're engaging the outer glutes right here as you, as you lift that leg up off the ground and using the chair for support. For yellow, you're doing the exact same thing, but no chair for support and you're gonna come up even higher. So see how she's using her arm for stability and her leg is coming up even higher than green. 
For red, it's the exact same thing, probably just at a faster pace, and that's the only difference between green, yellow, and red. Uh, the next movement, you guys, is fire hydrants, and you'll see why we call these fire hydrants in a second. <laughs> um, we're all doing the exact same thing. Um, so green, yellow, and red will be the exact same, uh, just probably different paces. Red will be faster, green will be slower. So what you're doing is you're on all fours, and you're gonna take one leg and you're gonna lift it to the side, just like you're a dog, <laughs> and there's a fire hydrant there, and you're relieving yourself, and you're lifting up again and repeating that um, with each leg as yeah. high as you can go. You'll really feel this in your outer glutes. They will be burning. Yeah, guaranteed. both sides will actually be burning. And for green, it's very common for our beginner clients. They might just do a really small movement, right? Like that, just yeah. a small yeah. movement, a small lift, going at a slower pace, resting in between each rep, while yellow and red will be going Probably quicker, higher and trying faster. not to take any breaks. Yep. Okay, fire hydrant. Next one, you guys, is calf raises, which are pretty simple. Green, yellow, red are all doing them the same. Red might be at a faster pace and green at a little bit slower. But all you're doing is standing with feet shoulder width apart. And all you're doing is lifting up on those toes, flexing those calf muscles, and back down. It looks just like this. You can do it with your feet pointed out, your feet pointed straight, or even your feet pointed in and working those different uh, muscles in your calves, okay? If red wants a little bit of an extra challenge, you could even hold those dumbbells in your hand for a weighted yep. calf yeah. raise. Those are our six movements today, you guys. Um, but if you get confused and lost on how to do them, just follow along with whichever color you decide to follow today in today's workout. Lynn and I are going to get started on the warm-up, so just follow along with what we're doing. And Natalie's going to explain the structure of today's workout with those six movements. Yes. So we're going to start out with some jogging in place. All right, guys, today's workout is super easy to follow. Every single exercise that we just went through, you're going to do for one minute at a time. So you're going to do one minute of squats, one minute of lunges, one minute of bridges, one minute of leg lifts, one minute of fire hydrants, and one minute of calf raises, then immediately go right back to the top and do again. One minute of squats, lunges, bridges, leg lifts, fire hydrants, and calf, calf raises, and then, the, and then we're done with our workout. The idea is that you wanna do as many reps as possible within that one minute while still maintaining perfect form. So the key here is speed. Yep. Yeah, and for the leg lifts and the fire hydrants, we're gonna do 30 seconds on each leg. Yeah. So you'll see a switch in between and we'll prompt yeah, you to we'll switch prompt legs to switch. too and do it as quickly as possible so you don't lose <laughs> time. Yep. And we want you guys to count your reps and compare them to us, you know, leave them in the comments below, see if you can beat Natalie or Lynn <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right. Let's do a couple squats. of squats just to get those muscles ready to go. We're going to be doing lots of squats here in a second. We Three more squats. Four and five. Toy soldiers, basically what that looks like. Put your hand out in front of you and try and kick that hand that's straight out in front of you. So you look like a toy soldier, right? You kick the alternating. Yeah. Left hand to right foot. If you're like me and not very flexible, this might not be very easy for you. you like me. Yeah, I can't Just really go. even touch my toes. It's fine. Okay, oh. loosen up, ready to go. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, okay one minute so we'll of squats. One minute squats, as many reps as you can, and then we'll prompt you to switch to lunges next. So if you're red, get your weight. All right, we're gonna start in five, four, three, two, one, and go. Squeeze those glutes at the top. You guys push off those heels. Squeeze those glutes. Count your reps too. We wanna know how many you guys can get in 60 seconds. One of the things that really helps me, you guys, with squats is each rep, I think, of keeping my chest up. And I think about how my knees are kind of pressing outward. As they press out, it's opening up my hips and allowing me the opportunity to, to go down deeper. Halfway there, 30 so more seconds, So having your you guys. toes slightly apart and your knees pushing outward helps when you're doing your form. You Keep notice going. that. 20 more seconds. I sometimes will put the dumbbells on my shoulders. You can either yeah, keep them down low them or put them on your shoulders, but my arms are really long, so when they're Ooh. down low, I have a tendency to lean forward more than I should. So I just keep them up here. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. Lunges straight into it. It's a rolling Backwards clock. Lunge. Oh my gosh. It's a rolling yeah. clock, you guys, so jump right into it. If you're like me, your legs are already sore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Count your reps. Good quality reps here. Try not to bring that chest forward as you go down. Yeah, really when you think about it, you take a big step back, 
and then you just lower that back knee to the ground. Yep. That's how you make sure that you're not pressing your body too far forward or back. And 30 more seconds. Bring that knee all the way to the mat when you can, you guys. Okay, really deep movement. And then you really want to push off with the leg that's in front and push off. Push off. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. I cannot Keep talk going. and work out at the same time. <laughs> oh, I was tired. <laughs> push up off your heel and not your toe. Okay, next up we got bridges, you guys, in five, four, three, two, one, switch. Ooh. Hurry. Okay, single leg. Quick red. transitions. Ready and go. Whoa, my legs are really tired. Squeeze. <sighs> Squeeze at the top. Yeah, remember to dig in with those heels, you guys. Sometimes it helps to actually lift your toes off the ground, which you may be able to see me doing and really dig in with those heels as you lift your hips up as high as they go, really squeezing your reds at the seconds. top. Switch side, red. You guys, your backside is gonna look so good <laughs> after this workout. Squats, lunges, bridges, oh 15 yeah. 15 more seconds, you guys. Those backward lunges where you step backwards instead of stepping forward really work your booty. Keep pushing through, you guys. I know you're fatigued. This is a hard Five, workout. Four, three, two, one. Switch. Oh. Leg lifter. Leg lift. Hurry and get and right go. into it. I'm going to do this side first. Doesn't matter which side you do, you'll switch halfway through. And the key here is you really want to lift that out leg, that leg that's out, as high as you can. You may not be able to go as high when you're first starting out. That's okay. And if you could do it at a fast pace, you really should feel that burn in your outer thighs. We're going to be switching. And switch. Other side. You may notice the side's a little bit harder because it actually works your outer thighs and your glutes on both legs when you're doing it. Yeah. So the second half doing it, you may be feeling like, why is it harder? Whoa. That's why. My legs are burning. Your guys should be too. Ten almost more there. seconds, you guys. We're almost there. This is a hard workout. Good job, you guys. Five, four, three, two, Ooh. one, and fire, fire hydrants. hydrants. Pretend you're a dog. Right into it, you guys. <laughs> Remember, we're going to switch halfway through. And for this one, again, we're lifting as high as it can go. The higher you go, the harder it's going to feel. Green will probably only be able to go a little bit. Not perfectly fine. Helps if you think of Squeezing your core, your abs, throughout this exercise helps give you a little bit more stability and balance as you lift that leg. Ready, and switch. What I don't want to see is your butt sticking up like this or your back rounding like this, okay? Keep that back nice and flat. After this, nice we've got calf raises, you guys, and then we're going to repeat that full six rounds. You'll notice that Natalie's on her forearms and I'm on my hands. It does not make a difference. You could do it whatever way you prefer because you're still isolating and working your glutes this whole time. Ready and switch. Calf oh. raises. Oh, man. Ready and go. So I like to mix these up by doing 20 seconds straight, 20 seconds with my toes out, and 20 seconds with my toes in. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I like to do that too. Work several different muscle groups within your calf. Yeah. All right, we're switching where toes are out. I feel like a ballerina. If you want to follow yeah, us, although I never was. <laughs> I know, I feel like it was ballet not coordinated or enough. Push up on those toes Ooh. as high as you can. Yeah. Flex those calves at the top. Your calves should be burning. So the key on these calf raises is to get as big of a range of motion as possible. So toes in, toes in. Unless you want to keep doing them straight. Yeah, and you really don't want to use a lot of momentum and bounce up and down. You really want to have a really controlled movement every single time. So when you lift up and lift down, kind of reset every single rep. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I don't know if you noticed, I did 1,000 of those. Okay, squats, you guys. Oh, right back into Ready squats, you guys. As many as you can. You guys try and do the same amount of reps this round as you did the first round. Okay, you want your feet shoulder width apart. Mine were a little bit too close together. So I just reset, all right? Squeeze those glutes at the top, you guys. 
And when we say squeeze your glutes, we mean squeeze your <laughs> cheeks. Your buns. <laughs> your buns. <laughs> Think that scene from Nacho Libre. <laughs> and try not to jip yourself, you guys. It's so easy when we're tired and fatigued. I know my legs are killing me already to go just part way down and do a little of this, a little of this, okay? 20 now, more seconds. All the way down for a deep squat, you guys. That's how you're really gonna lift that booty. I will tell you my whole life, I never had shape on my backside till I started doing squats, lunges, and deadlifts. Ready, and bridges. three, two, one. Oh. Lunges, straight into it. All right, you guys. Your legs should be burning. They are. Remember, with this one too, full range of motion. Try to take that back knee and hit it all the way down to the mat. Keeping your chest up the entire time throughout this motion. And then really digging in with your heel that's in the front as you come off instead of your toe. Okay, dig in with the heel. Doing good. Try and keep that pace up. 30 more seconds. I know you're tired, you guys, but pretty quick workout. It's only 12 minutes. We're over seven and a half minutes into it. This is the last set of seconds. lunges you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall <laughs> like I just did. That's good for your balance, too. <laughs> your legs might be giving out a little bit. Tell them to keep going. Ready? And bridges <sighs> on your back, you guys. Ooh. Try to jump into this quick. Remember, Team Green, squeeze those glutes at the top. The key here is you want to try and lift your shoulders up off the mat if you can. And just get your butt, your glutes as high as possible. Five seconds and we're going to switch legs, Red. The more you dig into those heels, switch, the higher you can reach. Yep, push off those heels, you guys. Last round of bridges, so give it everything you've got. When I do these, I really try to push off with my heel and not my toe. In fact, I even kind of lift my toe up off the ground a little bit, and that helps. Five, ten seconds. Get as many as you can. Try to pick up the pace here. Almost there. 1,009, 1,010, <laughs> and switch. All right. All right, leg lift, you guys. Try to get into it fast. Maybe start on the opposite side. up as high as you can you guys on these the higher you go the more you're gonna feel it in your outer glute we don't really work our outer glutes as much this is a great way to target that muscle build some volume to that booty <laughs> almost to our switch three two one quickly switch fast as possible Good job you guys you don't want to lose any time switching notice we put our hand on our hip you don't have to do that it just helps with balance yeah, and in reality, you guys, it's okay if you need to bring that other hand down for support while you continue lifting your leg. That's okay. Just keep lifting it. Keep going. Almost there. Five seconds. Go Next right. up is fire hydrants. Ready? Oh. And switch. Oh, my legs are burning. Oh. Straight These into fire me. hydrants. <laughs> These fire hydrants are... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You should feel it in both glutes because it works both glutes. It's a hard move. Remember trying to lift it as high as possible and as quick as possible. I know as guys we don't do these lifts as much as girls do. So if you're new to this, you'll definitely be feeling the burn. Uh, okay. Switch. There. Switch. Switch sides. Okay, last time doing fire hydrants, you guys. Push through it. I know it burns. Keep going. Yeah, we really don't do as many of these type of moves, but they work a lot of muscles. It's little muscles that we don't get to. So you may notice tomorrow you're more sore than normal. It's just because we haven't done these. Next up, calf raises in three, two, one. Oh. Stand up, calf raises. Ooh, if you're Ready red, challenge go. yourself by grabbing those weights for this last round. Full extension, Finish you guys. Finish strong is our last minute, you guys. This is our last minute of today's workout. All the way up, squeezing those calves at the top, full extension. As fast as you can go. 
Okay, I'm gonna point my toes in and switch. You don't have to if you don't want to though. This works different angles on your calf muscle. If you want calves like Natalie. They're amazing. She knows what she's talking about. Natalie's calves are amazing. Whole calves, whole calves are talking about. Some are in long socks, you can't see. Okay. Doing awesome, you guys. 20 more seconds. If you want to change up your position on your calf raises, work a little bit of a different muscle group. But keep going. Finish strong. 12 seconds, you guys, 12 seconds. After this, we're done. Woo! Yes, best part. Finish strong, all you can get in three, oh. two, one. Ah. Awesome. Uh, uh, good job today, you guys. That was a tough, that was a tough really leg hard workout. Uh, mental workout. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into stretches, but feel free to do these stretches throughout the, today and even tomorrow yeah, uh, if you feel like you're going to be sore from this. So the first one we're going to do is a quad stretch. So if you need something to hold on to for balance, feel free. You're going to grab that leg, bring that heel up to the butt as tight as you can, and keep that leg in close to your other leg. Don't let it flare out like this and hold it in nice and tight until you feel a good stretch down your quad. And a lot of times we have clients who can't pull their leg all the way up to their butt and that's very common. And so what we recommend instead is just put your leg on a chair or a couch yep. and just try Slightly and bend, that knee. bend yeah. your knee and get a stretch right in your quad right there. Switch. And the, your quad is the front of your upper leg muscle right there. Good job today, you guys. Today was a quick but killer workout, um, and that's what we do here at Dollar Workout Club with these types of workouts is they're 10 to 15 minutes long, but you're done for the day after that, and you got in your you time, which everybody needs no matter who you are, yep. no matter how busy you are. And these are the exact same workouts that we do when we're at home. Yep. We do these exact same workouts. All right, hip flexor stretch. So we're going to get down on one knee, almost like we're in lunge position, and we're going to push this hip forward as we lean back a little bit and push off that knee and you should feel a nice deep stretch right in here. You know one of the things we really talk about a lot at Dollar Workout Club is that there's no start date and there's no end date. It just is. There's there's no 12 week extreme trainer, hour and a half, two hours at the gym and a lot of people say can I really get good results with a 15 minute workout? And my response always is absolutely because it is so much more maintainable to get a 15 minute workout in four or five days a week than it is to kill yourself at the gym and not be able to maintain that long term. So yeah. this is something that you really can maintain for your whole life. Yeah, I noticed for me that the hour long workouts I couldn't maintain. And yeah. for that reason, like I'd get burnt out. Um, it was just hard for me to wait for my kids and other responsibilities. and. And Doing I felt like these, a failure when yeah. I couldn't keep it up, you know? And these fast, high-intensity workouts give me great results, and I can always fit them in, whether it's with my kids or in the morning or, you know, before bed or whenever I can fit it in. I can always think I could fit in 10, 15 minutes. All right, we're going to switch to a calf stretch, you guys. You can either do it standing up against the wall, or basically you're going to put one leg back, drop that back knee while you push that heel into the ground, and you feel a nice stretch right in here in your calf muscle. Your calves will probably be really tight after today's workout. Yep. Going up and down stairs tomorrow might hurt. Make <laughs> your spouse or your kids give you a massage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might hurt, actually. Yeah. But um, just continue to do these calf stretches because I promise they really will help a lot. Switch. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, feel free to do these before you go to bed. When you wake up tomorrow morning, drink lots more water. Um, that'll help with the soreness and get it, the lactic acid out of you as much as possible. And the most important thing is to keep moving. Don't stop moving, don't sit down and be like, wow, I did a killer you know, 12 minute workout, now I'm just gonna sit down for the rest of the day. That's the worst thing you could do. You're gonna get a lot more <laughs> sore. Yeah, because all tomorrow, that lactic acid builds even up. Even tomorrow if you're a little bit sore, keep trying with the workout tomorrow. Maybe drop a level if you need to, but um, working out through your soreness actually makes it better. Yes. Thank you guys for being a part of the Dollar Workout Club family. We yep. love having you guys a part of this family. Tell your friends, invite your family, and we will see you back here tomorrow tomorrow for another great workout. Bye guys. Thanks guys. See ya. Bye.
So you might be wondering why I'm holding this big whiteboard here. And with the new year coming up, you might be suspecting that this has to do with goal setting. And if that's what you guessed, you're right. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about goals. For me, goal setting was so important because I didn't used to have a lot of confidence when I was younger. I used to kind of embellish and exaggerate stories and a lot of times it led to low self-confidence because I never could actually do the things that I said I was doing. And I got to a point in my life where I just said, I'm not gonna ever exaggerate stories ever again and I'm just gonna do what I say I'm gonna do. And that's when I started getting into the habit of setting goals. And for me, I started just setting really small, tiny, tiny goals that I knew I could actually achieve. And through a long process of setting small goals and then achieving them, setting them a little tiny bit higher and achieving them, I really was able to build true inner self-confidence because I was able to prove to myself that I don't have to exaggerate my stories. I can say I'm gonna do something and then actually achieve it. And for me, goal setting was such a paramount part of that process um, for me to see a goal and write out a goal every single day, see that in front of me, and then know that I'm working towards a specific action. So what I'm gonna do is take a quick minute and show you exactly how our family sets goals. And maybe you can take some things away from this and do this with yourself or with your own family as well. So we get a whiteboard like this. I purchased this at Walmart for around $10 maybe, and then uh, we usually write our goals at the beginning of the year and then we'll adjust or change them throughout the year if we need to. So I split the goal board up into three sections. So I have my goals on this side, my husband's goals on this side, and then our family goals here at the bottom. And then what I try and do is put three goals. Now, it's really easy to think, oh, I wanna do this, and I wanna do this, and I'm gonna do this. But I found that if I have too many goals, they don't, it's too hard, I get too spread too thin, and it's hard for me to focus on one thing. So what I personally do is stick to three goals. I usually have a personal goal, a professional goal, and then a physical goal as well. So like personal self-improvement, and then physical self-improvement, and then professional. So I'm just, I put some examples on here to show you guys exactly like what our goals would look like. Now your goals obviously are gonna be very different, um, but sometimes it's good to see what other people are doing so you can get an idea. So I have, I have on here, read two books a month. And for me, this is actually realistic and I consider listening to books like Audible, that counts as well. Um, because I travel a lot, so I'm able to read books on airplanes and things like that. I know for a lot of stay-at-home moms, it's really hard to get time to actually read a book. So this may not be a good goal for you, but that's, this is just a goal for me. And then what I do throughout the year is I'll keep tally marks right here. Um, so as I read a book, then I'll keep track of it so I know exactly where I'm at with my progress. And let's say I get to March and I've only read one book. I know that this is not a realistic goal for me. So at that point, I might adjust my goal and say read one book a month, or I might even change the goal altogether. And it doesn't mean that you're failing at that goal, it just means that perhaps you didn't set it properly and you're just readjusting, and that is totally okay. It's, there's a fine line between not hitting your goals and not trying and knowing that you've set an unrealistic goal. So you have to be the one that determines that. Um, then my second goal would be to get certified you know, in X, Y, and Z. Maybe one year I wanna focus on getting certified in women's health or I want to learn more about nutrition and I wanna get a nutrition certification. You know, There's different professional goals that I have. I know one year I had a goal to release you know, X number of eBooks. Right now I'm focusing on a healthy cookbook. So those are different professional goals that I might have in that slot. And then um, my third goal is to run uh, four races this year. So I was a runner in college and I haven't been running very much lately So that's something I really do want to focus on um, And so one way for me to measure that is I have four races a year Which is approximately one per quarter. So let's again say I get to March and I haven't ran in any races I need to either a start registering for my races or B look at take a look at my goal and say is this realistic for me? And should I change and adjust it? But if you notice every single one of my goals are measurable. So it's it's not just um, I want to start running, right? Or I wouldn't say I want to read more books because that's hard to measure. Every single one of your goals, you want it to be something that you can track and measure and hold yourself accountable. Uh, my husband might have, you know, no late days at work. Um, stay in, you know, 175 to 180 pound range. Uh, listen to podcasts five times a week. So again, those are all very goals that are very uh, measurable and um, for him, realistic. And then our family goals, we have a salmon fishing trip. And 
I didn't write this out because I know just because this is how we do it, but we budget for our family vacations. So every single month we have a budget. If you're not familiar with budgeting, check out Dave Ramsey. His budgeting system changed our life. Um, and so I know every single month that we put a certain amount of money towards the salmon fishing trip. Uh, two is to save, and then I didn't put our goal on here because it's gonna be different for everybody, but save at X number per year. And then we usually break it down by X number per month. Um, so that way it's just in front of us and we know every single month what we're aiming to save within our monthly budget. And then lastly is um, visit with our cousins once a month. So it's really important for us to spend time with our family. Now that we live near our family, it's a lot easier for us to see our cousins. But um, So those are some examples of goals that we would set. If you notice, every single goal is something that's measurable and attainable. And then usually once a month or every six weeks or so, my husband and I will sit down and we'll kind of look at our goals and say, how are we doing? Are we is this realistic for us? Are we, um, are we working towards our goals? What are some things that we can do to support each other to reach those goals? Like I might say to my husband, I'm not getting any time for reading. Can we um, carve out 15 minutes a day where you watch the kids and I get some quiet time in the room? Or uh, if he is having a hard time, you know, he's showing up late for work, he might say to me, hey, Natalie, can you help me in the morning with my morning routine? Can you help with the kids so I'm not spending as much time with them or whatever the situation may be. And so we'll work together to hit those goals. So I hope that is helpful for you. I know that there's a lot of you that will be setting goals with the upcoming new year. And I would love to hear what some of your goals are in the comments below. Hey guys, we just want to take a second to let you know how much we appreciate you. Dollar Workout Club wouldn't be a club without each of you guys, and you mean so much to us. Yeah, and we want you guys to leave your comments. There's a section below where you can talk about if you've tried the recipe, or how you thought of the workout, or how you did in the workout, or questions about the motivational tips. If you have comments or questions, please leave them below. Yeah, and don't forget to invite your friends, you guys, to join us here at Dollar Workout Club, and don't forget to follow us on social media using these handles below. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!